Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. Good evening. This we're going to, we talked about uh, this morning, uh, how Satan, why don't you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, this is basically the second part, but uh, in verse 6, chapter 6, verse 18. The Bible says, flee immorality, every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not uh, your own? He says, for you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your uh, body. And so as we talked about this morning, we noticed from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, that we know that Satan has uh, schemes. And, and he knows uh, that fornication is a crime. And fornication comes from the Greek word pornea. And there's any it's unlawful uh, sexual intercourse. So that's fornication. So the only lawful intercourse in God's law is marriage. And we looked at those things this morning. And so we also define passion according to uh, the Bible and Satan uses that. And there's a passion that people uh, have and before they involve themselves in committing that crime against God. And that's what Satan does. And he's walking about like a royal life, seeking whom he may devour. And so we looked at a few passages this morning and we looked at Joseph and Jacob and how they uh, had the strength to do what God required them to do. And We saw the sinful passion of Potiphar's wife. Uh, she desired Joseph and Joseph did not want to sin against God. He knew the law of God uh, that concerned his body. And he would not do that. She continued on a daily basis to the point where she grabbed him and he ran and left his coat. That shows me what type of young man uh, that was. But they understood that. And then we mentioned Abimelech to Abraham, of course, was afraid for his life and he he lied to Abimelech and said, she is my sister. Uh, I mean, they were kind of getting, and Abimelech uh, took her and God uh, came to him and was going to uh, punish him. I want to, let's start, let, hold Genesis, you know how I am, hold first Corinthians chapter six, go to Genesis chapter 20. And I want us to understand that what we see in, in the New Covenant, the New Testament, is concerning our body and fornication uh, has been around. Uh, we see it in the beginning. It's nothing new. And so understand that the fact that Joseph would not sin against God, he understood what that meant. Uh, Jacob... Uh, he worked for Rachel seven years and seven more years. And then when they married, the Bibles, uh, we see that they were together in the way that God required them to be. But he was willing to work for her for that long period of time. And so you see that in the Bible, right in the beginning, Adam and Eve, when they had children, uh, uh, 
they were husband and wife, according to God's will. You see, and so uh, God established a law right from the beginning. He just did not give us a body to do what we want to do with it. That's just not what he gave it to us for. He gave us our bodies for a particular reason. And uh, when we get into another lesson, we'll learn how to overcome these things if I am not married or if I am a single person. But I want you to see the seriousness of this and and how this the people from the old covenant knew the law during the patriarchal time. Look at chapter 20 and verse uh, 1 of Genesis. And Abraham journeyed, and I'm looking at verse 2, and Abraham said to Sarah his wife, she is my sister, said of Sarah his wife, she is my sister. So Abimelech, uh, Abimelech king of Ger sent and took Sarah. You see, this is during the patriarchal time. And God, notice, notice what the Bible says, God came to Abimelech in a dream of the night and said to him, see, behold, you are a dead man. He's about to commit a crime against God because of the woman you have taken, for she is married. See? See? This is in the beginning when God established these laws. This has been in, this is the patriarchal law. It's, it's in the law of Moses and it's in the new covenant. That's what God established. And God met with him in a dream and said, you are a dead man. I want you to understand what God says. You are a dead man. And, and notice in verse four, now Abimelech had not come near her. See, he knew better. I mean, he had common sense. He had a lot of sense. Now, Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, what, wilt thou slay a nation even though blameless? Did he not himself say to me, she is my sister? See, they knew. And she uh, herself said, he is my brother. Uh, in the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands, I have done this. See that? Did he not himself say to me, she is my sister? Notice verse 16. God said to him in the dream, yes, I know that in the integrity of your heart, you have done this. And I also kept you from sinning against me. Wow. So that's a sin against God. Now, that's fornication because it's unlawful. See, Abraham and Sarah were not involved in fornication. That was lawful. But they were involved. But now we're getting into fornication, uh, unlawful, illicit sexual intercourse. Uh, when Abimelech was about to take Sarah, to make Sarah his wife, to engage in those acts, that's fornication. See, that's unlawful. That's what it is. And God said, you're a dead man. So right there in the beginning, we see examples of these things. And, and so in verse 7, Now therefore restore the man's wife, give her back, for it, he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you will live. See? But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die. You and all, wow, you and all who are yours. Notice Abimelech. And Abimelech arose early in the morning. <laughs> he got it, he got it. He rose. I like that. Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all the things in their in their learning, in their hearing, and the men were greatly frightened. And then you read all, you know what happened. Uh, he got up early in the morning and he got everybody together. He took care of that quickly. But I want you to see that God recognized what he was about to do and he was about to sin against God. This is on the patriarchal times. God was very active. And he was going to be rejected. I want you to see that he was going to be rejected. Not, but notice the crime. You shall, but if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. Whoa. So I'm going to reject you if you do not do what I say. So immorality and, and 
fornication. Remember when I said fornication, that includes everything. Adultery, having intercourse without being married, homosexuality, uh, bestiality, molestation. That's unlawful in the eyes of God. So that's fornication. That's fornication right there, unlawful. And the people knew that. You notice in during the time of Joseph, when he escaped Potiphar's wife, would not sin against God. What was the sin there? She wanted to lie with him. That was the sin. And he was, he was 17 years old. Uh, I know he was taken into Egypt at 17. And so he was a teenager. And so he would not do that. Because he did, how can I sin against my God? You see? And so the people, God established that law early in the beginning. It's in the law of, the patriarchal law, the law of Moses, and it's in the New Testament. People today act like it's something new. It's nothing new. We have no excuse. And as we said this morning, people, we have to be careful how we're deceived by Satan. People say it's okay uh, to do these things. And yeah, you know, people are living together now without being married. And because they're being fooled, they're putting the love of uh, their love before the law of God. And, they, and, and that's what I wanted to see this morning. And I'm not going to stay here long, but that's what I wanted to see, that uh, they, they were fooled by their affection and and we looked at Romans chapter 7 and verse 5, and we defined passion in Romans 7 and verse 5. And it called them, it called, Romans 7 and verse 5 says it's called sinful passion. Passions are not sinful. What makes them sinful, we go against the will of God as we uh, utilize them. And, and the passion there is an inward state, an affection, a passion, emotion, or influence. Effect, effect, and then it, uh, you see affection is in the definition of affection, a gentle feeling of fondness or like. You see, that's the... That's the uh, affection that you have. You have a gentle feeling of fondness or likeness. You care for someone, or a tender fond of attachment, a devotion of a love, and uh, is a disposition or state of mind or body that is often associated with feeling of, or type of love. You see, and so that's what people. And so I'm in love, and long as we. And I said this morning, people, you see this in social media. Some people teach this that when 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 children have questions about being involved in that lifestyle, of when should I do I get involved? You don't really hear people say, well, when you find somebody that you love and, and, and of course, Christianity should be involved and, and you get married. Yeah, you don't hear that. It's, it's when you find somebody that you love and you can trust and y'all both love each other, and then that's, that's okay. Well, that's not God's law. That's a crime. You see, and so these scriptures in Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable among all and the bed under file, but fornicators and adulterers will be judged. Just because a person is in love does not mean it's not fornicate. It's not unlawful. Does that make sense? I mean, if I, if I commit a crime and, and, I, go to, and, and I, do, I hurt somebody really bad and I go to court and say, well, I was, I was really hurt. I was angry. Are they going to let me go home? It's still a crime. You see? That's Satan's scheme. That's what he does. And he, he turns to, he makes things how can people live together without being married and live forever together and involve themselves in, in, in sinful things and, and think it's okay? They're, full, they're deceived. And they die like that. And they live like that. I know people who live like that with a clear conscience every day and live a life like they're married with a clear conscience, deceived on their way to eternal damnation. That's reality. So does that mean uh, in 1 Corinthians 7, 5, nevertheless, avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. See, avoid, that's how you avoid it. If you're not married, you're not avoiding it. So if you can't, look at 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Flee fornication, every, every sin that man doeth without the body, but he that uh, committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 10, 4, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in the body according to that he, that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Wow. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in the body. Satan knows that. Satan knows immorality. 
He comprehends that. And he tries to see people with things like passion and as long as you love him or her, you're doing just fine. And, and what happens, even when people are deceived, they get involved with the emotion. And sometimes they, because the emotion is so high, they reject the law of God. Because I'm in love. Because I like him. I like her. Because I don't want to lose her. I don't want to lose him. I'm attracted. You remember, it talked about how, how attractive Rachel was. The Bible talks about how attractive she was and, and she was beautiful in, in form and everything, her face. And she was so beautiful that Jacob was willing to work seven years for her, then work seven more years. And I said this morning, I'm not doing that. That's a long time. But that, that, I want you to see how that, that's an attraction. And, 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 and you look at, and that's how, but you see, but he was, what you could tell he was a man of God because his, his attraction did not cause him to sin against God. He was willing to, he wanted her to love her. He wanted to be with her as he married her. When he married her, he was willing to be with her when he met, but they knew. David was a, a man of God, a strong king, and he was on a rooftop looking at um, Bathsheba. And see, he saw her and his passion was involved. He asked about her, go get her. You see what happens? But I want you to see where, how it starts and not he's so engrossed in how he feels and his passions that he had, he, he forgot about, oh, did not consider the law of God. That's what happened. That's how Satan does it. And so one thing leads to another and, and he goes in to her, the Bible says, and, 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 and he committed adultery. And then adultery led to murder. See, that's what Satan does. That's what he does. And, and, and David lived with that. He suffered the consequence of that. And, and it's interesting that I, you see how much he really loved Bathsheba because when everything, when the baby dies, et cetera, and then David, of course, he marries her. He marries her. He loved her. I believe they really loved her. He married. He was very attracted to her. He married her. And he, he was, he, he couldn't marry her. You know why? Huh? He could, people say, well, how can he? Well, he, well, remember, uh, the husband was dead. And so he married her. And, and, and when he married her, after he realized the baby was not going to live, and uh, they got together when they were married. They did it right. See, he knew better. He did it wrong the first time, and that was fornication. Then when he married her, when they, Got involved the second time. That was not fornication. That was lawful. But all, all I just have to say the words. Every, all because of his desire. And I think David had like 600 wives. I could be wrong. Maybe five or 600. I, I could, but it was somewhere there. But, uh, you know, it's like all just be that passion and that, that affection that he had for her. It caused all that damage. And that's what Satan does. Because a person is fooled by things like that. A woman could lose her whole family. A man could lose his whole family because of an affection, an emotion, a passion. And he looks up or she wakes up and there's, the family is destroyed. That's how Satan works. You see, uh, because that's, that's how he works. And so he's there, he's, it, it, like, it's one of his schemes. But he couldn't fool Joseph. He fooled David, but he couldn't fool Jacob. And he's still trying to work that way today. And so we have to talk about these things. Now, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm not going to be long. I just remember preaching one time. He was preaching. He must have spoke about 25 minutes. He said, now I'm going to get into my lesson. And I'm going to preach myself. But I put my head down. I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> but I want to show you something. Very simple. And these, these lessons are extremely important uh, because uh, engage and involve, allow ourselves to be involved in fornication is a crime against God. That's not what the body's for. And the ways of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. So notice what Paul says here. Watch this in 1 Corinthians 9. 
In verse 25, he said, and everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. Yes, when you're an athlete, you exercise self-control. If you cannot exercise self-control, then you're not going to be a great athlete. They then do it to receive a perishable uh, crown. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But we an imperishable, you see. So are you saying I am disciplining myself? I'm, I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I'm have self control like an athlete because I, I I don't want to lose uh, my crown. That's what it, it, the crown is, is. It's imperishable. It doesn't end. He knows that. And so he's willing to do what he has to do. And you know, Paul was not married. He said, therefore, I run such a way and not as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air. So he's using this as an example, like a boxer, as I said before, uh, when he bo a boxer who's well-trained will connect. Uh, but I, he said, but I buffet my body and make it my slave. I like that. Lest possibly, after I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. He said, I make my body my slave. I, may, I put in subjection. And I like the way he's saying that because it's, it's, it's almost like if you're, if you're doing what you don't want to do, you're, 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 you don't, your body's not a subjection. And so if I see something or, and, and I go where I don't need to go or in, involved in things I don't need to be involved in, I know it's because I know it's wrong, I have a conscience, then my body's not in subjection. I'm, my body's controlling me. My, I'm the slave to the body. It's almost like when people in, are involved in drugs and they become a drug addicts, they get involved in addiction. And, it, it's, their, and, and it's like they're, they're suffering mentally because they know it's wrong, but they keep doing it. They keep doing it. Well, then their body is controlling them. They have to do things to train their body where they control their body. And that's what he's saying. And so he, uh, and so he, he, he disciplines his body. It's like he beats it up. You don't run me. I run you. He, he, he did that in order to survive spiritually. But notice how he says it. But I buffet my body and make it my slave. I'm telling you, it's like when you get into Greek, it's like he bruised it. It's a, he's not saying he literally bruised it, but he's like, they're going, he's working with it. He's disciplined. He's beating it down. You don't run me, I run you. You do what I tell you to do. I don't do what you want me to do. I do, you do what I tell you to do, you're mine. And he says, Less po if I don't do that, lest possibly, after I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Wow. If I don't discipline myself, when he's speaking, he's a qualified man. And some versions say cast away. But he knows that if I don't discipline my body, then I can become disqualified, a castaway. Now I looked that up, I looked it up in the Greek, and it says uh, disqualified, and I think the King James says castaway, unappropriate, unapproved. That, that is rejected. Something that is rejected, a reject, worthless. So, you know, something when you when something is they, they check it to make sure it's approved. And then when it's not approved, they reject it. You ever work at a factory, they reject it. You know, it's like if you there's something that you you have to make sure that everything is the way it should be. And if it's not the way it should be, they reject it. Something is right. They, they accept it. It's not right. there. And so he's saying that if I don't do these things, I could be rejected. That's in the Greek. Worthless. And he And so he knew that. I want to understand how detrimental, how serious this is. This is an apostle who is dedicated to God. Record, he's not married. And, and remember now, Peter was married. He's the opposite. Peter was smart. You see, Peter was Peter and Paul were totally different. Peter had a wife, and that's how he stayed qualified. See, Paul was one that didn't have a wife, and so he 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 had to do things to stay qualified. Very interesting. Because he did not want to be rejected. Now, let's close with, I shouldn't say that, but let's turn to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to close. Matthew chapter 7 verse. I want you to see that Paul didn't want to be rejected. Let's look at three verses, Matthew chapter 7, just, and we're going to move fast. Matthew chapter 7 verse 23. I want you to see this. And so here's, here's the rejection. 
just what fornication can do. And so as when I say fornication, what, remember fornication is, fornication is unlawful sexual intercourse. The only lawful intercourse in the eyes of God is marriage. So homosexuality is fornication. Bestiality is fornication. Molestation is fornication. You, you see, all that is fornication. So I want you to see that. And so, and, and so uh, if you engage in fornication, then you, you, he says that I can be rejected. I can be unapproved. And here's what, and I looked at that. Now notice, and here, here's the rejection. Notice this. And so imagine someone who is living in a life of fornication or allowing themselves to be deceived by this world. And, and so imagine someone just shacking up, they called it. And notice what happens when death comes. In seven, chapter 7, verse 23, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. That's rejection. That's not the end of time. That's rejection. Depart from me. That's rejection. Not approved. That's rejection. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Look at Matthew chapter 25 and verse 46. That's rejection. Matthew 25 and verse 46. Here's a, notice the rejection. He says in verse 45, and then I will, and then he will answer them saying, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away. See, that's rejection. That's the castaway. Not approved, unapproved. But I say to you, see, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. He says again, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in the body according to that he has done, whether good or bad. It's not yours. It's mine to do what God requires me to do with it. It's not mine to just do what I want to do with it. Let's close the revelation. I want you to see the rejection. Well, first Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter nine and then Revelation. First Corinthians chapter nine, first Corinthians chapter nine, first Corinthians chapter nine. I, I want you to see the rejection. Paul was willing to discipline himself because he did not want to be a castaway. You remember in first Corinthians chapter five, when the young man was uh, committing fornication with his stepmother, Paul said, turn him over to Satan, that his soul may be saved. And we know in 2 Corinthians, he, uh, he asked for forgiveness. He returned back to the church. He repented according to God's will. And I know, uh, I know he's glad he did that today because he would have been rejected at the judgment. Look at this. In 2 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, do you, uh, do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do, be, notice that do not be deceived. Whoa. Do not be deceived. People that are deceived today thinking everything is just fine because it, I'm in love. It feels good. Everything is just wonderful. I'm having a great time. I am happy. Well, that's as happy on the way to destruction, being deceived. See, so he said, be not, do not be deceived, neither fornicators, Idolaters, adulterers, or effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers shall inherit the kingdom of God. That is a rejection. You see, fornication is in there. Adultery is in there. See? Drunkards are in there. It's a rejection. Let's close with Revelation chapter 21. A rejection. So Matthew 7, 23, rejected. Matthew 25, verse 46, rejected. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, rejected. Fornication is there. Revelation chapter 21. Notice the rejected. Verse 7 and 8. 
he who overcomes shall inherit these things and I will be his God and he will be my son. See that if you overcome, that also includes doing what God requires us to do within the body that he gave us. But here comes the rejection. But the, the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, and immoral person, there's the fornicators. See, immorality, that's fornication. So that's why they call other sexual crimes immorality, that's fornication, that's against the law of God. And so, but notice the, the immorality is in the immoral person and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, notice, this, re, notice the rejection. Their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's the second death. That's eternal damnation. So we have to be careful that, remember, Satan is on his way to hell, and he knows that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. And so he is the great deceiver. And again, how he does that, he, people are tricked based on emotions. And they think because they're happy or I love what I'm doing, it just feels so good to be in love or et cetera, then these things do not apply to me. That's how he does it. Remember John the Baptist told the rulers, it's not right for you to have your brother's wife. Why did he have his brother's wife? And he was happy having his brother's wife because John said that he was beheaded. So he involved himself, himself in adultery because he was happy. Everybody we talk about are dead and gone now. And the judgment is coming. You see, it's not about being happy. It's, it's about being happy in what God requires us to do. And don't be deceived because happiness that causes us to go against the will of God is deception and fornication.